Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. My name is Luis Sam. I'm a mechanical engineer and in this video I want to talk to you guys about some of the things that you won't learn in school. So first I actually want to talk about what schools are good for. Schools will, number one, they'll provide you with all the I guess education, theoretical education that you need for your degree, right? So as a mechanical engineer, for example, I need to learn all the different disciplines in engineering, right? So thermodynamics, you know, fluid dynamics, machines, engines, mathematics, a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of uh, controls, right? So all these things are required. Now, I do think that probably most degrees can be condensed. Uh, especially nowadays in the age of the internet where you can learn so much quicker, you don't need to memorize everything. But I think that university is nice and it's ni nice and specific. You can only usually take the courses that you want to take and that you need to take for your degree. Schools are fantastic for networking. Uh, it's one of my biggest regrets. You're never going to find another environment like a school where you have hundreds, even thousands of like potential friends and colleagues that you can make. Definitely make some friends, network. They're making connections is fantastic for finding work. And I also think that schools are really good for discipline. Um, I find that the work environment is actually less stressful than school. I think that if you can get through school, you can probably get through work because uh, it's 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 not as intense. Let's talk about what you're not taught. I think the, the I think probably the biggest thing that you're not taught is how to find a fucking job. <laughs> as far as I know, there are no mandated courses that teach you things like how to build a resume, how to build a LinkedIn profile, how to network, how to offer value to companies, what companies are going to expect. It's a real shame because in school, you're programmed to think that if you get good grades, that's going to equal a good job. And that is not the case. It's not true. And in fact, it's so often quite the opposite. So let's say you've got two students, right? Student A is an A student. Student B is a B student, just to make it simple. Both these students put in eight hours of work. Student A puts in all of his eight hours into his schooling and student B puts only five hours into his schooling, but he spends the rest of his three hours learning other things, right? So that could be uh, learning coding, doing an internship, working at night. It could be taking business classes, something to advance uh, either his, his, other, his other skills or his, his experience in his field. Student B is going to get hired a hundred percent of the time. I'm sorry to tell you guys, that is the reality. GPA means very little. Work experience means a lot. That is what is going to get you hired. So I see here that you're applying for one of our entry level positions. Yeah, yeah I just graduated and uh, got a 4.0. That's great, but we're looking for someone with three to five years of experience. Oh, I, I thought the requirement said entry level. Yeah, yeah, an entry level with three to five years of experience. How the fuck? Now, the way that engineering takes care of this is they have what's called a co-op program where you are required to take internships during your curriculum. If, if you work two or three different internships, you don't have to worry about having to build a resume. Like, you, you, you're, you're pretty set. If it's too late for you to, to join the co-op program or you didn't get in, you can still try and find some internships. Really, really do, guys. Don't waste your summers. Learn some coding, right? Or, or whatever skills are required for your specific discipline. Um, get a head start on things. Another thing you're not really taught at least in engineering, is what to expect out of work. I mentioned this before, in school, it's all about design, it's all about theory. You don't really have to learn how to be a good communicator. You don't have to learn like leadership skills. You have to do a few group projects, but there are no courses that are dedicated to teaching you some of these tangible things. And it's critical in the real world. You have to work with people in the real world. You have to learn how to deal with your superiors, with your coworkers. Sometimes you have to lead, you have to lead a project, learn about budgets, you know, time management. I had a lot of trouble when I, uh, when, during my first job because I, I never communicated with my boss. I, I'm a very introverted person. I used to be extremely, extremely introverted. And I, I would like just kind of, Go, give me my work and let me go work on my own. And I got in trouble a lot of times because I would be working on, let's say, a project and I would be, let's say, a bit, bit behind on the project. And when the boss would show up, you know, a couple weeks later, you know, you're behind. Why didn't, why didn't you tell me this before? So I had to kind of learn the hard way. because I got, I got in trouble a few times. And the last point that I'll cover is in regards to do naughty or money. Cheddar. I think one of the problems is schools don't teach you to look at, at money and money is not everything, but... Well, if you're going to invest four years into a program and you're going to pay all these student loans for a degree that's not going to pay very much and not going to be in demand, then why are you doing it? Why aren't we taught that it's important to look at things from an investment point of view? So with engineering, I don't think this is a big issue because generally there's always going to be demand for engin engineers and there's always going to be like the salary is, in my opinion, it's worth it. But before you jump into any any degree, just take a look at what the statistics are. So what is the average salary of this degree? And what is the average unemployment rate? What is the demand 
for whatever career you're going going into because four years or longer is a big investment as far as what i think you guys should do to prepare yourself for sort of the real world number one would be get internships while you're in school if you're in engineering, this means take the call program, guys. If you can, find some sort of internship, find a job that's related to your field, take public speaking courses, take some sort of leadership courses, uh, learn some some tangible skills that, that like are specific to your engineering, like I mentioned coding before, how to interview, how to give value, how to add value to companies, how to build resumes, network. Definitely network. Make a lot of friends. Make a lot of connections and um, yeah, life will be life will be a lot easier. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and even feel free to message me or if you have any questions, leave comments for sure. I highly recommend you watch other people's experiences. Uh, I've learned a lot from, from people like Zach Starr. I'm gonna link some of the descriptions to those videos. Till next time, my name is Wee Sam. Thank you all for watching. I love you and I'm gone. Peace.